Hello underachievers, so that's right, today I'm going to be talking about top surgery because everyone always asks me questions and I've already answered a lot of questions so I thought I'd put them all in a video so the next time someone asks me a question I can just be like Go watch the video. But yeah, hello, if you don't know me, I'm Noah. I had top surgery with Miles Berry on the 7th of January 2019, so I'm about four months post op? Wait, no, I'm like three months post op. Okay, I'm, I'm less post op than I thought I was. Yeah, I had top surgery with Miles Berry three months ago. Um, it was in London. I went privately, which meant I paid for it. So yeah, I'm just gonna jump right into the questions because there's a lot of questions. I ask you guys to ask me questions on Twitter and Instagram, so I'm using both. So the first question is, how are your nipples? Um, they're doing good. They're there. They're very round. I still feel kind of weird when people touch them or when I touch them because they kind of... I explain it like this every time. I can't feel the actual nipple. I can feel the skin like underneath, so when someone touches it, I can feel pressure, but underneath the nipple, not on the actual nipple. The only way I can describe it to someone who hasn't had top surgery is you just put like a two pence coin on your arm and then you press down on the two pence coin and you can feel under the two pence coin but you just can't feel the coin. That's kind of what it feels like. And it's kind of unpleasant to be touched. I, uh, it's getting better to be honest as time goes on, like it's not as, it doesn't feel as weird as it used to. Ugh. Still feels kind of weird. I don't know. Also, I keep getting like little spots on my nipples. Like just like normal spots that you get on your face. The like squeezy ones. Um, I squeeze them a bit and it's... It hurts, so there is kind of some sensation in my nipples. I don't know, it's weird. Someone asked, did it take you some getting used to being comfortably shirtless, or was it like a natural thing for you? Well, it's kind of, hmm. So before I actually grew tits, um, before I hit like female puberty, um, I was always shirtless all the time. Well, I'd swim with the boys in like swimming trunks without a shirt. I'd go outside without a shirt. In the winter, I'd go outside without a shirt. I was always shirtless, I like being naked. I'm just like, I'm, I'm just like that. It's just nice to not wear clothes. So when I got top surgery and I saw my results, which was a week post-op, it was kind of like, hmm, I was comfortable being shirtless with myself and then after the first time of being shirtless around like any particular person, after that time it was fine. So it was scary like taking my top off and walking around the house shirtless because my dad would see and my brother would see, but once they'd seen for the first time it was chill, they were just like, oh, you're just going to be shirtless now and I was like, yeah. Like that's literally what my brother said, he was like, are you just going to be shirtless now? And I was like, yeah, it's going to happen. So I'm not like self-conscious about my chest because I love my chest. Um, I'm more self-conscious about making other people uncomfortable. <laughs> Someone asked, does looking at the scars give you dysphoria? Absolutely not. I don't look at my scars and think, oh, I had tits. I kind of just look at them and think, oh, they'll be nice and faded in a few years. I'm lucky that I went with such a good surgeon that my scars are like symmetrical and they're like straightish. They're rounded at the end, but like that's perfect. Like that's exactly what I wanted. I'm not going to say I like my scars because obviously I would have preferred to not have scars, but like they're fine. I mean... So whatever, I was expecting them, I don't, I don't, I'm not that sad about them. If I wanted to go outside shirtless and wanted to be stealth, I could literally just like get a mate to put makeup on them and they'd disappear. Someone asked, did you ask how you wanted your surgery lines to be or was it based on your chest size? Um, my incisions, I didn't really ask how I wanted my incisions to look because I knew that Miles Berry, my surgeon, was known for like really straight and really thin incisions, which is what I got. They're very nice. If you look at my incisions, like from afar, they look like thicker than they actually are. Like the actual incision mark is really thin. It's just redness because my body is healing. He said how straight my incisions would be would be based on how my chest is actually shaped, like the the actual pectoral muscle and like the chest wall. That would affect like how round or how straight my scars would be. So he told me that he's not going to know for sure how my scars would look like until he actually gets in there and does the surgery. But yeah, he told me he'd do them as straight as possible and I was like, thanks, because that's what I want. Someone asked, was it weird seeing your flat chest for the first time? Um, no, not really. It was weird how it wasn't weird. Like if you look at my reveal video, I was kind of like, I looked down and I was like, oh, okay. It's my chest, and then I just started complaining about having spots on my chest. It was weird in the sense that it hadn't been like that for a few years, like it hadn't been like flat for a few years, but it wasn't as weird as I thought it would be. Like when I looked in the mirror, I didn't think about it being weird, I was literally just like, what the fuck, like this looks so good. Someone asked, did you talk about nip placement, or did Mr. Berry just do what he thought was best? For nipple placement, I wasn't really worried about that, and I didn't feel like I had to ask about it, because I'd seen so many Mr. Berry results, and all the nipples look great look like they're in great places. He told me the exact measurements of where the nipples are supposed to be in relation to your shoulders and like your ears or whatever. Um, to be honest, I just trusted him like with my entire being. <laughs> I'm sure if I asked he would have explained in more detail but I didn't ask because I didn't feel worried about that. Honestly, I feel like they're in a perfect place and that's that's where they should be. When I had my reveal, obviously I was worried about everything. When I got when I got the bandages off the whole time I was like, oh, what happens what happens if I'm really swollen? What happens if my nipple falls off? What happens if my nipple's in the wrong place? Obviously you worry about that because because you do, it's irrational, it just happens, but I wasn't really worried about nipple placement, so I didn't ask. Someone asked, do you have sensation? Um sensation is kind of weird and it <sighs> Touching some parts of my chest just makes me feel like unpleasant and other parts is like, oh okay. Um, so with sensation, with sensation like three months post-op, I can feel all this, can feel all this, can feel all this, 
can't really feel the nipples, I can feel underneath the nipples, but I can kind of feel more of the nipple than I could a few weeks ago. Where I can't feel is literally like under the nipple. Uh, uh, okay, I can't really feel this. I can feel there's pressure somewhere, but I don't know, I can't feel it much. I don't have much sensation in my incisions, but there's more sensation than there used to be. It's all kind of coming back, and it's not tingly anymore, but as time goes on, I'll get more sensation. I'm not really worried about not having nipple sensation. I never gave a shit about nipple sensation. I don't understand why people give a shit about nipple sensation. I never touched my nipples before surgery, so I don't know if I had great sensation or whatever. I just, you know, I'm not bothered about nipple sensation. <laughs> Someone asked, how long did it take for you to sleep on your side again? Um, right. So, the thing is, I healed very quickly, and I guess I have a high pain threshold. Um, I went back to my surgeon for my six week post-op appointment and he was literally like I'm so nervous about you posting your pictures so early on because your results healed so quickly and other people will expect that I can sleep on my side like like five days post-op. It wasn't it wasn't necessarily painful It just felt really uncomfortable because of the pulling but I could not deal with sleeping on my back for that long What I did is I just put a bunch of pillows by my side and kind of just lightly hugged another pillow. It was it was uncomfortable, but it was fine. Someone asked, do I use a specific cream to help heal my scars? Um, I use bio oil. Bio oil is good. I'm supposed to massage bio oil into my scars every day. I forget to do it two times. I do it like once a day. I'll try and do it two times a day because it, it is definitely working and my scars are starting to like, um, fade. But I've also used a few times some like scar strips. They're called Scar Away. Um, I don't know how useful they've been. It's kind of weird. Um, I put them on and they do look like my scars are fading, but also it makes my scars feel a lot harder, which I don't know is good. And I have really sensitive skin and like the skin was getting dry. So I'll try them a few more times. I, I don't know if it works very well, but I have used them a few times. Someone asked, were you worried about loss of sensation and other complications? So for me, loss of sensation was never something that like was in my mind. Like that's not something that I really gave a shit about. I 100% knew I'd have at least some sensation. Like I could feel all this. Like obviously I could feel that. I knew that I'd be able to feel that. Again, as I said, don't give a shit about nipple sensation. I was worried about other complications, but that's just because I have anxiety and I worry a lot. I was worried about my nipples falling off. I was worried about moving too much. One time in particular, a few days before my reveal, I lifted my arm or like I moved my arm a specific way and it felt like my entire chest pulled and I was like oh shit I've opened my incision everything's bruised it's gonna be really swollen I was worried about literally everything that could go wrong and literally nothing went wrong like my my surgeon did a good job someone asked how has your dysphoria changed since top surgery I'm gonna be completely honest and I'm gonna make a video about this in the future I have so little dysphoria now since starting tea obviously my dysphoria has gotten better my voice dysphoria has gotten better I've gotten broader shoulders, I've got, you know, my face has changed, it looks more masculine, my, I'm a lot veinier, I've been noticing veins recently and I'm like, ooh, nice. I'm hairier in general, so obviously that helped dysphoria, but getting top surgery was like ridiculous for my dysphoria. Like a few weeks after top surgery, I was literally convinced that I had like no dysphoria at all. Obviously I don't have chest dysphoria anymore because I don't have titties anymore. Um, I have dysphoria about like my waist and my hips, I don't have wide hips and I know I don't and I convinced myself I do, but I've got like a small waist and that makes me feel like horrible and that makes me dysphoric, but in general, my dysphoria is so much better. I don't have to worry about binding, I don't have to worry about wearing tops that make my chest look big or hiding the chest bump that you get with a binder. I could be naked quite happily. I have bottom dysphoria, but I can kind of... It's at, a, it's, at, it's at a stage where I can kind of ignore my bottom dysphoria to a point. But yeah, my dysphoria has improved so much since going on tea and getting top surgery. And yeah, it is true that transitioning helps alleviate dysphoria. Seen some things on Twitter where people were mad at some trans girl not being dysphoric anymore because she went on HRT. You go on HRT and you get surgery to alleviate dysphoria. If the aim is to alleviate dysphoria and you alleviate dysphoria, that's the point. Somebody asked how much did it cost and how long was the waiting list? So in order to get referred to my top surgeon, I had to get a separate appointment at my gender clinic. That cost about 150 pounds. I literally just went to my clinic and I was like, I want top surgery. I want top surgery with Miles Berry. Can you refer me to him? She asked me a few questions about my chest and dysphoria because I'd already had a few assessments with her. She was like, yeah, here's your referral. So that cost 150 quid. And then after that, I had an appointment with Miles Berry. I emailed him and he gave me a slot for my consultation a few weeks later. Um, I could have had one earlier, but I couldn't get there on time. So I had my consultation, that cost £100. That was fine, and then he gave me the go-ahead for surgery. He gave me a specific date for surgery. And then, overall, my top surgery was £5,975. Which, yes, is a lot of money, but in comparison to a lot of American surgeons, in comparison to a lot of English surgeons who don't have as good results as Miles Berry, that's, like, incredible price. It's expensive, and I'm very lucky to have been able to afford it because you guys obviously, like, the GoFund 
me help that a fuckload because I'd already spent all my money on egg freezing, which is another part of my transition that I shouldn't have had to pay for. But yeah, it was expensive, but 100% worth it. Honestly, Miles Berry is literally, in my opinion, the best top surgeon that there is in England. In America, I think, like, Medali and Garamoni are, like, the top ones, but, like, Miles Berry is up there with those guys. How long was the waiting list? So, for my consultation, I probably could have, could have got a consult a week after I emailed, but I wasn't available on that day. Um, it took me about two weeks to get my consult because I was available two weeks later. From consult to surgery, I could have had surgery like the next month. Like it could have been a month waiting list, but again, I had to have someone with me in my recovery and my mum couldn't take that much time off work until the next month. It took me two months, I had my consultation in the beginning of November and had my surgery at the beginning of January, so like two months. I could have had it in December if my mum had time off, but she didn't. I know now that his waiting lists have gone up because there's more people going there. His prices have gone up a bit. I think they're at like six grand now, maybe just a bit over six grand. His console prices have gone up to 150 pounds. So if you're thinking of going with Miles Berry, like, go quick. If you can afford it, like, go now. Somebody asked, did you have to be on T for a certain amount of time to get top surgery? Um, with Miles Berry, no, I didn't. Um, at my gender clinic, they recommended I be at least six months on T, and that's due to a lot of factors. One of the reasons is that when you go on T, you get increased muscle growth. If you work out and get bigger pecs, it's probably easier for your surgeons, you know, do top surgery because they know where to place the scars. Also, for some guys on T, um, their tits get smaller because, like, fat redistribution, it happens. How far along was I on T? June, July, August, September, October, November, January, 5, 6, 7. I was seven months on T when I had my surgery. It was never a thing that was needed by Miles Berry. He operates on people that aren't on T. He doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Someone asked, is there a specific reason you pick double incision over any method? So if you guys don't know, double incision is a surgery where you get two incisions, that's why it's double incision, and um, they cut out your nipples and they place them in a good place, in the best place, the best place. So the other types of surgery are periareola, where pretty much they cut around the nipple, then they cut again, further around the nipple and they kind of pull the skin together into the nipple. So that means that you're left with a few scars only around your nipples. If you get keyhole, they pretty much just like cut a hole on your nipple, around your nipple, take all the fat out, the breast tissue out, and then you're left with like hardly any scars. Maybe this is an unpopular opinion, but I think most people who are borderline periareola shouldn't get peri because a lot of the times if you're too big for periareola or your skin is not elastic enough for periareola, you end up with nipples down here because they can't place your nipples differently if you don't get your nipples cut off. Sometimes people are left with like loose skin and it kind of looks just like loose boobs. The nipples usually aren't placed in the correct place and it's just like I just personally wouldn't be happy with the results. Obviously some people can be but I wouldn't be. The reason I went with double incision it was because I was too big for peri. Probably could have done peri but it wouldn't have looked good at all and I would have looked like I had like loose tits. I went with double incision because a benefit of double incision is that they can place your nipples in the correct place which obviously is a big factor in how good your chest looks and also they can contour your chest. So if I had peri my chest wouldn't really be flat I'd have like loose skin. What Mr. Berry did with my chest because I had double incision was he could get in there he could get out all the shit and then he could contour my chest so that it looks like good. Your chest will just be tidier with double incision I just I just prefer double incision, and yeah, you end up with scars, but scars fade, and you can cover them, and I just, I'd rather have like a good looking chest with scars than kind of like a loose looking chest without as many scars. Somebody asks, are your nips hard or soft right now? Um, it doesn't, I'm not sure that's really how it works. I don't think my nipples are reactive to like touch yet. They're kind of hard, yeah, I, I don't really know. Somebody asked, was there any little part of you that was worried you were making a mistake? Absolutely not, like not even like an inkling, not even a tiny bit, not even, not even like in the back of my brain was like, you're making a mistake, like that was never a thing. Literally before I started growing tits, I knew that I didn't want tits at all, I was convinced that I would never grow tits, and my mum was like, my mum gave me a talk when I was young and she was like, you will start growing boobs, and I was like, that's silly. I won't do that. There was never a doubt in my mind that I needed top surgery. Obviously it's fine to doubt yourself because that's cutting off such a big part of your body. That's literally cutting open your chest and taking shit out of it that's been there for years. It's okay to doubt yourself, but you shouldn't get it if you doubt yourself too much. But no, in my mind there was no doubt. I absolutely needed this, I absolutely wanted this, and I'm so happy I got it. it literally like, it's the best thing that's ever happened to me. Somebody asked, did you get anxiety from the pressure on your chest from the after surgery binder, or was it ever too tight? I had anxiety the whole time I had the bandages on just because I couldn't see what it looked like. For a week, I couldn't see what my chest looked like because I literally just had bandages on. The pressure on my chest was kind of grim. So my post-op binder was like, it was supposed to be tight and it was kind of a bit loose because they had the, they gave me the smallest binder and I'm very skinny, so it was still a bit big. I had my binder on and I had the bandages on, but I couldn't stand up straight because if I stood up straight, my binder felt too tight and it felt like my scars and my incisions and all all my chest shit was being like pulled. So if I had my binder on and I tried to stand up straight, it felt like it was pulling and that gave me a lot of anxiety because I was worried that I'd open my incisions even though I knew it wasn't going to happen. Was it ever too tight? Um, it was very tight but I don't, it wasn't like, I, it's not like I couldn't stand it, I just, it was just annoying me and I can't do, 
shit like that. I was supposed to wear it for six weeks, I ended up wearing it for four and a half weeks, and I didn't really have much swelling, so it wasn't really an issue for me. Somebody asked, how long did the drains have to be in, and did it hurt taking them out? Uh, my drains were just in overnight, Mr. Berry puts drains in, and then takes them out the next morning. I had my surgery at like 10am on the 7th, and then I had my drains out at like 6am the next day. Did it hurt taking them out? Well, yes, for me it hurt. For a lot of people it doesn't hurt, and I've seen people call other people pussies because they felt pain when the drains were coming out. If you didn't feel pain, that's great. People can't help feeling pain when something's being dragged out of their body. So for me, pretty much, they took the drains out and I could feel it coming out and it was like pulling and it was like a sharp pain and it was horrible, it felt like disgusting and obviously when they took the drain out there was like blood pouring down my side, it was just dripping and it felt disgusting and I nearly passed out. Like it was painful and it felt so unpleasant, my face literally went white, I literally nearly passed out, it was probably the worst part of the whole thing. Someone asked, how do people react to your surgery and what was your initial reaction? I'll start with my initial reaction, I was just like, yeah. I was like, I mean, right, normally I'm very self-conscious and I'm not very happy with how I look, but like after surgery I was like, I look good, I was like, my chest looks good, I was like, this is good. And that was my reaction, I was very happy with it, honestly couldn't fault it at all. Everyone else's reaction has been like so fucking good, like people have literally been commenting like, like this is the best results I've ever seen and fuck, it's like, just really nice to hear because like that's literally like, I'm so happy with it. People that weren't so like educated on like trans stuff and people that had never seen chest results, um, they were even like, they were like, oh, I expected so much worse, I thought it would be gross, but it wasn't. My dad is really squeamish, and I showed him my chest, and he was like, oh, that's, that's not bad. I've only had positive, like, reactions. Even people who hate me have told me that my chest looks really good. I've, like, not even one single person, not a single person has said my chest doesn't look good. And I probably, I probably sound really cocky about it, but literally, I can't be cocky about it, because it's nothing that I did. My surgeon did this. If anything, Miles Berry should be cocky about it. I'm just very happy with my results. Somebody asked, does it feel weird to not have something that you've had your whole life? I know it feels good, but isn't it like, wait... What? Oh right. Yeah, it is. It does feel weird. On Twitter recently, I saw some dude being like annoyed that somebody was like, I kind of like feel weird without having my tits. And I don't miss my tits at all, but I can understand where they're coming from because my whole life, for most of my like adult life or my teenage life, I'd had these things on my chest that were just there. Um, I didn't like them. I hated them. Sometimes couldn't even look at them, didn't want to touch them, but they were still there and they were still part of my body. Obviously I wanted them gone and as soon as I could get them gone, I got them off. But it's still weird and I'm kind of used to it now, but sometimes still I'm like, oh wait, I don't have tits. Feeling weird about not having tits doesn't make you a trender. It literally just means that you're like, recognizing that part of your body has been chopped off. Like, it's a weird thing. I think about it all the time. I'm like, wow, it was weird that I had that surgery. Like, yes, I'm a dude, and yes, I shouldn't have boobs, but also, I just went into some hospital and got a healthy part of my body chopped off because I didn't like them and because they made me want to die. Like, that's weird. That's weird. It's fine that it's weird. It's okay to be weird, but it's weird. Someone asked, how much weight did you lose from the surgery, aka how much does breast tissue weigh? Um, obviously it'll depend on how big your tits were. Um, Weird thing, after surgery I gained weight, like quite a bit of weight, and it may have just been swelling. I've obviously lost weight again after a few weeks. I don't really weigh myself, but it was like a kilogram, I think, less than a kilogram. I Honestly, I couldn't tell you because I don't weigh myself. Somebody asked, do you feel more confident about yourself and body than you did before the surgery? 100% yeah, I will literally get shirtless at any given opportunity. I like, I am in love with my chest. I don't like many aspects of myself, but like, my titties are good ones. I'm fine being shirtless, again, I can be naked. I like, it's fine. Somebody asked, does it feel like your nipples are misplaced? Like, after living your whole life with them in one spot, does it feel like they're in the wrong spot? After surgery, like, directly after surgery, yes, it kind of felt like that, because I couldn't feel my nipples, I could only see them, and they're in a different place than what they used to be. After I had the bandages taken off, it took a bit of getting used to, but, like, no, they feel natural. Somebody asked, why do you call your flat chest titties? I've had loads of people ask me this, and somebody had issues with, like, me and my friends calling our flat chest titties. Like, honestly, one of our friends said we got our tits chopped off, and, like, we now have titties or whatever, and then someone dm them, like, are you okay with that? To be honest, I just find it funny to call them titties because they're not titties. And I used to not be able to say the word titties because it made me feel gross. But now I have I have titties. Like, I don't have titties, but I've got titties. Somebody asked, do you need new size clothes post the surgery? Um, no. Um, I didn't realize how skinny I was until I got top surgery. Obviously, I knew I was like slim, but I had like a chest and I had a binder, so it made me look a bit bigger. After surgery, when I started wearing t-shirts, I was like, wow, I am really skinny. These shirts are a lot looser than they used to be. No, I don't have to buy new clothes. I always wear oversized clothes, and sometimes I wear clothes that fit, but I, I don't need new clothes. Somebody asked, did you get to decide your nipple size? Um, I didn't get to decide my nipple size. If I wanted to, I could have asked to have them a specific size, because I've seen people go with Miles Berry that have done that. But Miles was just like, yeah. We'll just give you average male size nipples. I already had small nipples to start with. My nipples look fine. I'm fine with the nipple size. Savannah asked, how did it feel coming straight out of surgery? I feel like it would be very euphoric and happy. Coming straight out of surgery was a weird thing because I'd never been put under 
on anesthetic and honestly it wasn't like happy or whatever it was kind of just like what's going on with the fuck like when I woke up I couldn't stop swaying anytime I opened my eyes I'd start swaying and I felt like I wanted to dance <laughs> Obviously the next day and days after that I felt good about it. Yeah, it was I was happy. I was very happy I was more just kind of like worried about like damaging myself. Laura asks when the nip scab falls off Does it look like a nip? Um, the scab does not look like a nip. It looks like a scab um, My nipple did not look like a nipple. It was kind of inverted. It looked a bit like a crater as time's gone on My nipple has like grown out and I have a nipple sort now, which is great. Clayton asks were you ever grossed out during the healing process? Oh 100% 100% first time I tried to have a shower after I'd had my bandages removed I literally nearly passed out. I had plasters over my nipples to keep them safe. Um, I stupidly took the plaster off before it was wet. I was supposed to go in the shower, get the plasters wet, and then take it off. But I was so excited to see my nipple, I literally just pulled the plaster off. And I was literally, I was like, oh my god, like, what have I done? And I didn't have regret, but I was literally, like, sat on the bathroom floor being like, I've done this to myself, I've literally... I literally put this much pain on myself and my body is like crying because it's like got a scab and it's like it's not bleeding it's not pussing but it just it's just healing and I was like whoa a bit of plaster got stuck to it and I was like oh my god no and I was worried about all that shit and I grossed myself out but it was fine it was fine after that I just got used to it and my nipples were gross for a while they're great now we good Scarlet asks how does it mentally feel there's lots of trans people talk about their mental experience with surgery honestly I am lucky that I never had post-op depression. I kept myself busy, I kept myself doing stuff because I know that even even when it's not after surgery, in general, if I don't do anything, I feel like a worthless piece of shit. I feel like I may as well just not be here. I had to keep myself occupied and that's what I did. So I didn't feel like, I didn't have post-op depression. Honestly, I was like, I was worried, I was anxious about healing, and I was anxious about my nipples, and I was anxious about a lot of stuff, but I was fine. I was still in pain for a bit, and like, that's fine, whatever. A few weeks after surgery, I had a bit of like, I had a bit of a drop, I had a bit of depression. Well, I already have, the, I, I have depression, I am depressed, just, I'm, I've been diagnosed with depressed since I was like 12. I have that, and I deal with that, um, that was like a few weeks after surgery where I was feeling low. But it was nothing that I couldn't handle, and it's nothing that I wasn't used to, so I, it might have just been like, I was just sad. It might have just not been to do, like, surgery. Laura asks, will the scars ever go away? Um, it depends on the person, depends on the body, depends on how you treat the scars, depends on what you do with your body, depends on what you do with your scars. My scars will heal, and my scars will fade. Uh, they've already started fading, you can't really see it from this video, but like, if I put pressure on them, if I put pressure on them, they literally look like they're not there. Like, I can't, the blood drains from them, and like, that's what it's gonna look like when they heal. Somebody asked, did you have any dreams while under anaesthetic? No, I didn't. I don't remember. I don't remember being under anaesthetic. I remember them putting me under and I remember falling asleep. I remember waking up. Don't remember anything when I was under. Somebody asked, is stopping testosterone before surgery really necessary? Um, in short, no. I know a lot of surgeons ask people to like stop taking testosterone before surgery. It's just because when you take testosterone, your blood becomes thicker and if you're going to have a blood clot, you're more likely to have a blood clot or have like issues or complications to do with your blood if you're on testosterone. I was not asked to stop testosterone didn't even really come up in the conversation, he just asked how long I was on tea. Somebody asked, am I top? No. Somebody asked, what do you think about the scars? Do you like or dislike them? I already kind of talked about this, but like, I'm fine with them. I don't like them. I don't necessarily dislike them because I know they'll heal. Sometimes I wish they weren't there and I have like, I have like little like, kind of like, bigger bits of the scar. I've got like round bits of the scar where um some of the uh, stitches popped out. That's fine. They'll heal. It's fine. Honestly, I'm just lucky that my chest looks good. Somebody asked, does it hurt? Now, this is a question that I can't really answer. Sometimes it does hurt. If I stretch suddenly, or if I move my arm suddenly, it kind of hurts. It kind of, it's like a pulling sensation. Um, if someone slaps it, it hurt. Cory slapped my nipple accidentally, accidentally, and it hurt because it's still like, it still feels gross. My nipples, I've got some weird thing about nipples. I had a thing about nipples before I had top surgery, but my nipples hurt a bit. When I massage the scars, it hurts, but I think that's just because I'm very skinny and I'm literally just like digging into the ribs. After surgery, yes, it hurt for a few weeks, maybe a few months, but it's fine. Somebody asked, was it awkward being shirtless in front of him? Um, I'm guessing you're talking about being shirtless in front of Mr. Berry before I had surgery. Yes, it was awkward. Yes, I was uncomfortable because obviously I had my like tits out and I didn't like that. Nobody had ever seen them. Like nobody had seen me shirtless. My boyfriend had never seen me shirtless until after top surgery but I was like this is the first and last time I'll ever have to do this I've just got to get through it the quicker it takes the easier it'll be so I was just like yeah whatever just go and it was weird he was like testing like differences and like testing symmetry and testing like like fucking elasticity it was weird it was awkward I didn't enjoy it but it was fine I just got through it somebody asked did you have to pay extra to get the inverted one sorted I did not have to pay extra to get my inverted nipple sorted both of my nipples were kind of inverted. They were kind of weird looking. I had weird looking nipples, I guess. They weren't that weird, but they're inverted. Mr. Berry kind of explained why I had inverted nipples and why some people had inverted nipples, but he explained that 
after like top surgery, if you put a nipple on a flat surface, it won't be inverted because it will be able to pop out. So say this is a boob, this is the inside nipple stalk and this is the outside nipple stalk, that's what you see about the nipple. If you've got a short nipple stalk and your boob grows, then the nipple will kind of kind of be like pulled, so like the inside of the nipple will come in, I can't explain it correct, but yeah I didn't have the pair so to have my inverted nipple sorted, it was just, it's just not inverted anymore. Last question, what do you miss most about having them? I don't miss having tits at all, like not even a tiny bit. So yeah, that's the end of the video, hope you enjoyed it, if you have any questions, literally just go comment on my Instagram post um, that I posted tonight, I'm open to answering any questions that I haven't answered today, I said answering weird. Yeah, if you want to ask me anything, just, just comment. Just comment on my recent, because my comments here are disabled. That's the video, hope you enjoyed it. If you didn't, fuck you, I don't give a shit, I enjoyed it. I got good nipples and you don't. See you later losers, I'll just give you a, give you a bit of a, bit of a, I wanna fucking go, I wanna fucking go, oh, can you see me?